There was a part of Lauren that wanted to scream at the top of her voice. There was another part that wanted to run and keep on running, but she knew she was Pip's only hope. She lowered the long branch down into the pit. The first of the rats were mere inches away from Pip as she grasped onto the sturdy bough like her life depended on it, which, of course, it did. Pip placed a foot on the wall, hoping the branch would give her enough purchase despite the greased surface, but it was not to be. Her foot slammed back down, and the pained squeal of one of the rats sent a tremor of fear through her. She looked down in horror to see her feet covered and the rats climbing over one another in order to get to her. She screamed and let go of the branch and frantically jumped, shuddered and swept, desperate to free herself from the snapping, clawing battalions of flesh-hungry vermin that were still emerging from the gap where the grate had been. Help me! Help me, Lauren! She cried desperately like an infant as razor-sharp teeth tore through her thick denim jeans. <coughs> Another howl of pain erupted from her lungs as the rats continued to scale her body, latching onto anything they could. Ankles, calf muscles, thighs. They battled one another, desperate to find a fresh piece of meat where they could sink their incisors. Lauren was crying too now. She thrust the branch further into the pit. Take it, Pip, take it! Pip seized it with everything she had and closed her eyes. The acute pain was secondary to the terrifying realisation that she was moments away from being stripped to the bone unless a miracle happened. She wasn't sure, but she thought she'd lost control of her bladder as her friend began to hoist her up once more. She felt warm, damp patches all over her body as cloth and skin was torn in a rapid flurry of snapping heads. Make it stop, make it stop, make it stop! She wept as Lauren pulled harder than ever. Pip's body, little by little, began to rise off the ground. Her left side pushed against the greased wall, trapping some of the feeding creatures momentarily before they let go losing their prime position and falling back into the manic, scrambling throng. The flexible bow continued to move upwards as Lauren let out loud grunts of exertion. Pip held on even tighter, and with each heave a few more of the filthy, disease-ridden creatures fell. Others leapt at her. The odd one managed to grasp on, but for the first time there was a tiny bit of hope, in body at least. Lauren was a strong woman. She went jogging every day, she played league softball. If she could carry on, Pip could get out of this. She looked down to see dozens of rats desperately trying to run up the greased wall but to no avail. It was working. This was it. She was going to get out. Suddenly Pip felt something tugging on her left breast. She looked down to see the filthy rodent's hungry black eyes staring up at her. The creature was about the size of a small cat, and it peeled back its lips revealing blood-covered teeth. Pip felt sure that any second it would pounce at her face. She closed her eyes. She couldn't take any more. Then it came. She felt the talon-like claws sink into her cheeks. She did not cry out, though. The only fear she had bigger than this was that one of these monstrous things would leap into her open mouth. Inside, however, she screamed a thousand screams. They were loud enough to deafen the gods. She waited, fully expecting the giant rat's teeth to begin ripping her at any second, but the attack never came. She dared to snatch a glance, but the rat had disappeared. Despite everything else that was happening, her heart lifted a little. It must have fallen off. She was still inching higher and higher thanks to Lauren and any moment she would be out of this pit, then together they could batter away any hangers-on. Of course, when they finally broke free of this nightmare, she would need shots. Yes, a hell of a lot of shots. But whereas a few seconds ago she was convinced it was all over, now there was some possibility of light at the end of the tunnel. Even the shifting, clawing, biting filth that was still attached to her seemed a little less terrifying as the possibility of escape loomed even nearer.